It's the same thing. It's, it's, it's ridiculous how they always go after the legal gun owner. The legal gun owner isn't the criminal. The legal gun owner isn't the one that won't, goes down and shoots up the Danforth. Well, Toronto is experiencing yet another summer of the gun. In fact, 2018 might be a record year for homicides. And in light of the mass shooting on Danforth Avenue last month, the City Council in Toronto, their solution to this was to look at means in which they could ban the sale of guns and ammunition in the City of Toronto. And you know, folks, it's only a matter of time before they also legislate out of existence the few remaining shooting ranges that are in Toronto, such as this building here, the Toronto Revolver Club. Well, I'm with Meredith Cutting. He is the past president, the immediate past president of the Toronto Revolver Club. And uh, first of all, Meredith, what do you make of the city's knee-jerk reaction that all these you know, criminal acts using uh, firearms will go away if we simply have a gun and ammunition ban in the 416? Well, the biggest problem with it is that they don't learn by history. People that don't learn history or study history are bound to repeat it. They did a, hand, uh, a firearms ban in Australia and their crime rate went up by roughly 400%. So by taking away the firearms from legal gun owners, they're not going to do anything because criminals don't register guns. Criminals don't buy guns from a registered source. They don't have any uh, concept and respect for the law, and they're going to do as they wish. Now, Meredith, do you challenge Meritori on his recent statements about 50% of the guns used in gun crime in uh, Toronto come illegally from the U.S., but the other 50% um, are bought legally and they're trafficked uh, to the criminals. Uh, where are those numbers coming from, and do they uh, pass your sniff test? Well, statistics are, are, are very misleading. Let's, let's use you and I as an example. You're from Toronto. I'm from Toronto. We're from Toronto. You're from the East End. I'm from the West End. 50% of us are from the East End. 50% of us are from the West End. Still only two people. It's misleading. The, this business where um, a statistic, if you want to call it that, being 50% of the firearms used in crime in Toronto are from legal sources, how many guns is that and what 50% are we talking about? Is it 20? 50% of the 20? Is it all the guns that were seized over the past year and 50% of that? And where did this information come from? If you or I, as a legal gun owner who happens to have a registered gun, goes and sells it or gives it to somebody who does not have a license and who does not register it, the onus comes back on the person who's registered. Why would anybody in their right mind do that? Also, Meredith, how do you react to the response that, um, and you hear it off repeated these days, especially in light of the mass shootings that we've had in this city, that there is absolutely no reason why somebody living in the city of Toronto should own a gun, period, legal or otherwise. How do you respond to that? <sighs> With frustration, laughing. Um, the majority of people that own a firearm are sport shooters. They are involved in nothing more than punching holes in paper, the hard way, at a certain distance, competing with their fellow shooters, and they do nothing wrong. They do nothing wrong. They're not out there shooting up the city. They own a firearm for one reason and one reason only, and that's to compete sportingly. And the hoops and hurdles that we have to go through to own those firearms are phenomenally magnanimous. It's huge what a sports shooter has to go through. So, pardon the pun, target the proper entity, target the criminal, target the illegal firearm, don't target the innocent because you're not going to accomplish anything. So by having a ban, the only thing that it does is it subjugates the innocent 
And the thing is, is they're looking at the wrong thing. They're going after the tool, not the person who uses the tool. We have laws in this country that are very good. Enforce the laws. Don't back down on the charge. Lay the charge, follow through on the charge, but leave the innocent person alone because it's the innocent person that does no wrong. And Meredith, we should point out that in addition to being a gun aficionado, uh, in a previous life you were a veteran Toronto police officer. Uh, you've been on the streets firsthand. Um, tell me from your policing experience, if this ban were to go through in the city of Toronto, you know, no more gun sales, no more ammunition, uh, does it make one scintilla of difference in terms of the gangbangers out there and the alleged terrorists uh, committing these terrible acts of violence? No, it won't change a thing. As a matter of fact, if anything, the crime rate will go up. The crime rate will go up, uh, and, it, and it's proven historically. It happened in England, it happened in Australia. The crime rate went up once firearms, ammunition were banned. For them to do that here in the city, it's not going to make an iota of difference. Not one way or the other. There's this perception that if the, uh, the citizenry is armed, there's not going to be as much proliferation of crime because of the fear factor from the criminal aspect. Um, if there are no guns, if there are no weapons, if there are no swords, there are no knives, well, it's open season. You can just go and create mayhem and do whatever you want because there's nobody going to be able to uh, stop you. And hey, 911, how fast will a police officer get there? Unfortunately, the, today's policing is more reactionary than proactive, which is a shame. Because, and, and I've seen it because my oldest son is on the job and they go to a scene after it's happened, not before, which is unfortunate and is due to manpower. It's due to the fact that a lot of the policing powers have been taken away. The investigative tools have been taken away from most police officers that are on the street. And as a result, you see what's happening. You know, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's ridiculous how they always go after the legal gun owner. The legal gun owner isn't the criminal. The legal gun owner isn't the one that won't, goes down and shoots up the Danforth. The legal gun owner has to go through what I said, all the hoops and, and hurdles. You have to go and the only way you can use your firearm is at a registered approved range. Who approves it? The province, the ministry. The only time you can take it out is when you're going from your home to the range. And the thing is, is that legal gun owners follow those rules. Illegal gun owners don't care. They stick it in their waistband, put it in their pocket, and go out and create mayhem. Okay, so why are these good-meaning politicians, they mean well, don't get us wrong, we know that they mean well, and they're doing the very best they can in a very bad situation, but why do they continue to go after, tooth and nail, the person that does no harm? It's wrong. It's wrong. And uh, we're sick and tired of being vilified. We really are. As a shooting community, and it's not just our club, it's not just Toronto Revolver, it's the whole firearms community, of which there are millions in this country. We are sick and tired of being the scapegoat for these people who cannot and will not follow the, uh, the true, tried and true methods within the criminal code. We are sick and tired of being the scapegoat for, as I said, good meaning politicians who just cannot see the writing on the wall. And one last question, Meredith. Uh, given that you are a gun expert, given that you spent I'm many... No expert. <laughs> I'm no expert. A, a gun fan, a gun aficionado then, but, but given that you know about guns and you fire guns, given that you were a police officer who for several years patrolled the mean streets of Toronto, if you had the ear of the mayor, what would you tell him in terms of giving him advice to address illegal gun crime? I would tell him the very same thing that I would tell anybody, whether it be the mayor, the prime minister, the premier, the, the standalone politician, enforce the law. Don't make 
Ill, you know, ridiculous rules that are going to do nothing for our society enforce the law. The Harper government in, uh, increased penalties for illegal gun ownership and the use of a firearm. Soon as the present government got in there, they got rid of it. It wasn't very kind. So what happens is, is they go and they take away the penalty that was supposed to be the deterrent never got to be used. Everything is for the criminal. The victim is way, way, way down the list. So, you know, no, they, they, it's, it's time to enforce the law. We have good laws in this country. Damn, we have good laws. I mean, look at what we have to go through just to participate in our given sport. We have good laws in this country. Enforce those laws to the letter and don't give people a break that break the laws. You know, don't, don't back away from that. And that's the problem. Uh, there's far too much of this, oh, we can't offend anybody. I'm sorry. The day of can't offend anybody where lives are at stake is way, way, way overdue. It's gone. They sure don't seem to mind offending legal gun owners, though. No, they don't mind at all. They don't, and they'll try every trick in the book to do it. So. Thank you so much for your time, Meredith. Appreciate it. Thank you.